Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Bellied Up Podcast. I am your host, Charlie Barons. Joining me is my co-host, Miles, the You Betcha Guy. How we doing, folks? Did, you didn't mention anything about that intro. I thought you were going to take issue with you being my co-host. No, I... Hey, this is your town. This is your city. This is your state. You're damn right. And we are at Dale Z's home of the Hot Nuts $3 special, ladies and gentlemen. Get down here. We might have to get in that nut hut right there and um, uh, maybe get some... Whoa. Oh, that, oh, that's just a little nut hut. It no, says on that, it. a little nut hut. Uh, just a little nut hut. Um, now, is that a quarter turn deal? No. Oh, no. I think they just pull it out. And, oh. Anyways. Charlie, lo- how you doing? I feel like it's been <clears throat> a while since I've seen you. Miles, speaking of hot nuts, <laughs> guess who just bought a Harley? Davidson <laughs> Motorcycle. Hold on. What? Yeah. You bought a Harley. Yeah. I did. I, I like the way you said that. I, was, I got to check uh, and see if you got a barbed wire tattoo or not on your... Oh, don't... You got your appointment do, scheduled? Don't judge me. Don't be Where stereotypical about this. Where is your chaps at, Charlie? Uh, those are in my bedroom, Miles. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Because you're not riding your motorcycle here today is what you're saying. Correct. Yeah, okay. no, I, I rode my electric Chevrolet Bolt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Find a guy who can do both. I, I, I can do both. I have both. And in fact, my dream is to trailer my Harley with my Bolt. You want to know what I did when I saw that you bought a Harley, Charlie? What's that? Harley, Charlie. Harley, Charlie. Good time, Charlie with a Harley. Good. Oh, my God. Good time, Charlie. Good time, with Charlie, Harley. with a Harley, whiskey bent and hellbound. I like That's that. You. Wow. I just made that up right now. Hey, put it in a country song, yeah. okay? Let it get 500 spins on Spotify. Yeah. So, um, so hold on. So I saw you put it up on your story. Yeah. You got it from a wonderful I gal. got it from Barb. Barb, she looked like the salt of the earth. She salt. Looked great. Oh, my gosh. So Barb is absolutely amazing. She put it on Craigslist. Sorry, that was burp. Um, and I I found it on Craigslist. That's where I found it. Makes sense because she put it up there. And uh, oh, it's a beautiful bike. Beautiful bike. Uh, ninety eight Harley Davidson Sportster. And Barb took impeccable care of this hog. She showed me. Can I can I show you actually what she sent me? Yeah, uh, because she had this motorcycle in several competitions and hang on. I got to find Harley Barb in my phone. There it is. First of all, okay, oh, don't yeah, we look we cute? So put the uh, that, she just looks like your aunt. Like she I, looks like she could be your aunt. She could be. Yeah, she could be. I mean, that's a good looking bike. I don't know yeah. anything about bikes at all. But it looks like a good looking one it's to a me. Sexy machine is what that is. And, and those th- are the trophies. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is an eight trophy winning Harley Davidson that Charlie picked. Count them up. again. There's twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, maybe there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe there's only eight. I thought these were little <laughs> trophies. <laughs> Yeah, there's only eight. Hey, there's 12. We'll say there's 12. Hey, there's four not pictured. Yeah. There's four not pictured. So first of all, when I saw that. Yeah. What'd you think? I thought. How cool your buddy Chuck is. I said. You have to call me Chuck when I'm on the. Well, you're a good time Charlie with a Harley, though. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, we'll go with that. I said, wow, Charlie's really hitting his midlife crisis early. Thank you for saying early. I appreciate that. Uh, also, look at my hair now. See, I'm doing it like Uncle Jesse. Yeah, I I've can got see the that. Uncle Jesse. I, I haven't gotten a haircut, so it's growing longer. I'm, I got a little center part for all of you out there in uh, radio world. How's it looking? Does it look okay with the headphones? Oh, yeah. Okay, we're Feathered and lethal. No, Jared, Jared moves his hand like, eh. Feathered and lethal. I got to look at it. And, um, you know, now that I got a Harley, my hair is very important. Okay. Well, but no, because you, I am. I yeah, hope that you're okay. a helmet wearer. Oh, yeah. I'm a, you know, some people call them brain buckets. I say no. Uh, it, and by the way, wouldn't you rather have your brain in a bucket than splattered all over the highway? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So anyways, no. What are I'm, your plans with this Harley? Well, first of all. At the time of recording, now I know we are in the future, but it is uh, Harley's anniversary, big old anniversary going on. 
in Milwaukee. So, um, you know, my plans are I'm going to obviously make a video called First Time Harley Owner because in my line of work, for those of you who don't know, anything I personally want to purchase, I just have to make a video out of it and then I can write it all off on my taxes. And then it's free. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Hopefully nobody. Well, even if the IRS is listening, that doesn't matter. I'm doing it by the book. Yeah. By the book. I didn't write the laws. I'm just taking advantage of it. Yeah, them. yeah. You're going to do a video, but when are you going to take that thing for just a cruise, just you in the open road? You know what, Miles? You going to head up to Door County on that thing or what? Hey, I'm not, but we are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Got a seat on the back just for you, Miles. I saw that. Luckily, right before I left to come here, I saw the the story that you got the Harley and I actually packed my assless chaps as well. Damn, yep. that's going to be so much fun. You and I just going up to get them Door County cherries. <laughs> Go cherry picking in our assless chaps. Yep. Sweating it out in a uh, in a uh, little yeah. cherry grove. It's going to be what a what I would call a slippery situation with all that leather and sweat. Oh, yeah. Can yeah. you imagine the the uh, if we rode today, it's 89 degrees. If we rode today up to Door County, do you know what that seat would look like by the time we got there? Well, let's just say just I don't puddle. think Barb would take a refund on it. No, a lot of swag. That, that is what we would call soiled. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess I don't know. I never picked like we'd you be as- riding along Lake Michigan. Lake Michigan would be like, damn. That is a wet seat, you yeah. know. Like it'd be so wet, Lake Michigan would be envious. The the car behind us would have to have their windshield wipers on the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and now that everybody has tuned out of this podcast, we can talk just, to the real fans. Yeah, to kind of wrap it up here, Charlie, on the Harley talk. Good oh, time, we're Charlie wrapping it up. Harley. Okay. I guess I Safety just first. It, if. You would have told me when I met you how many years ago? Ah, it's four, been a while. Four, four or five ish years we, ago. We go back a long ways, Miles. Um, you and I, I don't think I would have had on my bingo card that you'd be a Harley guy. But I'm from Milwaukee. This is where Harley Davidsons were born. I understand. And you know that. what they were, Miles? You know what Harley and Davidson were? They were bicycle mechanics. Also, I was a bike mechanic. I should have seen it coming. Should have seen it coming. The, the, the dominoes were lined up and all I needed was someone to blow the first domino over. And now I got a Harley. The last thing I'll say too, is I feel pretty good right now because you're already going through your midlife crisis and I'm not even close. You're not much younger than you. Well, Hey, I mean, I don't know. You've been working out a lot. What are you squatting (laughs) these days? Uh, 285 uh, for five a couple weeks ago. 285 for five. So you should be up to 315 by now. I, uh, well, I'm getting there. I'm working up to 315. So basically I can squat two of you, Charlie. Uh, I think we should do a video where you just squat one of me. Yeah, that'd be fun. I, I could do it. Are you doing it with the proper form so you're not messing up your back? Charlie, Charlie. Of course I am. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You, know, you can't just go up to 285 raw and not have good technique. Well, you know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't assume expect that. a guy with, with twigs for legs to know that, but. I don't have twi- Dude, <laughs> I got some decent looking thighs. Yeah. I know you guys can't tell because I'm underneath the bar right now, but. You know, we'll have, uh, a, we'll have a cheek off once we get our chaps on. We will. And folks, if you are new to the Belly Up podcast and this is your first episode listening to, we don't spend each episode talking about our thighs and assless chaps. This is just a special occasion. Yep. Um, cool. This is the midlife crisis episode. So welcome to that. Yeah. Um, we got some good callers coming up. I yeah, we do. Oh, my God. Oh, they're so good. They're so great. Um, All of them. Yeah. And uh, Charlie, just stay safe on that thing. Hey, I will, Miles. Make sure you look both ways. Use your turn signals, the whole shebang. Wear your helmet. I always wear my helmet. And buckle up. (laughs) Do you guys get that? Because there's not buckles on our... They thought it was funny, Miles. Should we take some callers? Let's take some callers. Let's take some callers. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who are we chit-chatting with? Hi, this is uh, Patrick. Hey, Patrick. Belly on up to the bar, fella. What's on your mind? All right. So I had a quick question for you. Sure. My my question is, how small is a small town? Ah. How, how small is a small town? What do you think, Charlie? Because I've done a little. 
Go ahead. I, I've been moving a couple times, and every time I move, I move to a bigger city, and they tell me that my previous town is small. Mm. But what is what is so, the real answer? So where you know? are you currently living then? So as of right now, I live in Milwaukee. I go to school at UWM. But prior to that, I lived in uh, Dubuque, Iowa, because I did my undergrad there. And then prior to that, I'm originally from Sparta, Wisconsin. Sparta. Sure. Yeah. You know Sparta? Oh, yeah, I know Sparta. It's well, right up there by, you know, Toma. Right? Sparta is close to Toma. To- Toma, in between Toma and Lacrosse. Yeah. There's Sparta. Okay. goes Toma, well, Sparta, Lacrosse. Charlie, let's start there. How do you think that Sparta is a small town? I mean, you know, it's a small town unless, you know, you're from Toma, you know? It's all relative. Yeah. You know? I guess I think that's kind of the conundrum that he's in. I think that's the question. How small do you have to be to be considered a small town? And do we do this off population or do we do it off situation? Or do you do it off of how many bars are in the town? That's know? that's how you Personally, measure it. There's a town of 500 Personally, that may think, have five bars. That might be the big city. Yeah. Wait, Patrick's trying to say something. What would you say, Patrick? I was saying I think you kind of have to take into account population, but also vibes of the town. Vibes of the town. F- a vibe. I think that's what he said. Okay. So here's how you determine if your small town is a small town. First, how many bars do you have? If it's just one, I don't know if that's a town. You got to have at least two. <laughs> Otherwise, it's unincorporated. Yeah, it might just be a township. <laughs> a township. It yeah. might be a township at that point. And don't let the word ship confuse you. It's a small situation. How high do you go with population in a small town, Charlie? <sighs> I'm going 900. Under 1,000 in Un- a small town. Under 1,000. Okay. I can get on board with that. I th- what about the the towns that are maybe between five and 10,000? Is that a small city? Well, let me phone a friend on that one. Patrick, what do you think? Well, so I, Sparta is around 9,000 people. Whew. And growing up, I didn't seem to think it was that small of a town because we, we had some towns that you're talking about, five, 900 people. To me, that was small. Yeah. But again, I talked to different people. They got different answers. Well, you talk to a city slicker and oh my gosh, they're, they're definitely going to think, you know, that. That's a small situation. Now, was Dubuque calling Sparta a small town? Yeah. So I, all my friends from like the lacrosse area. And then when I moved to Dubuque, they said 10,000, 9, 10,000. That's a small town. Yeah. I think I'm going to go small cities around that. Okay. Right. Yeah. Small towns mm-hmm. around a thousand and under. And everything else above that is just a normal city, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You could call it a small city. Yeah. I think that's what we do. Yeah. Okay. That that might be it. Hey, how many bars does Sparta have? I mean, every corner. Okay. Per, pretty much. How many corners does Sparta have? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, like I said, it's a it, it's a city about nine or ten thousand people. I I figure there's probably forty or fifty bars there. I think you also have to look to at your forty or fifty bars. Oh yeah, that's how we do it here, Miles. Oh, much else to do. Well, I think that, I mean, you got 40, 50 bars. That's just the city, I believe. Right? Well, this is Wisconsin. Yeah, that is true. You kind of have to look at your bar to church ratio, you know? If it's two bars to every Mm -hmm. church, that's kind of a standard practice. Yeah. Well, Patrick, did we answer anything for you on this call? Yeah. No, I... I think, I mean, I think I'm kind of back where I started and it's kind of up to the individual, the eye. Yeah. I mean, I think it's all situational. Um, I think I don't get too caught up with all the vernacular of what it should be called and not. I, I do think that the vibe of the city or town matters much more than the actual population. There could be a town, mm-hmm. a city, a small city, of 9,000 people and really have small town vibes. I think that probably matters a little bit more than what the population is. Let me ask you guys this. What are the essentials for a small town to have everything you need? I say for sure. You need at least two bars to start. I I was under, I've always been told in, in Wisconsin, a town needs, for something to be considered a town, it needs two of three things. 
and that's a bar, a church, and one singular house. If you have two of those three, you're good. Okay. Two of those three. I would love to see the place that just has a bar and a church and no houses. I like that. And it's the oh, same there's, building. There's, pl- there's plenty of Are there? Where there's just a bar and a yeah, church, you ever, huh? You ever heard of Middle Ridge, Wisconsin? No, where's that at on the hand? I'd say it's... Oh, geez. It's in between Sparta and Lacrosse, kind of in the Bangor region, if you know where that is. Oh, yeah. Bangor. Yeah. Sure. So kind up, of... Up, up uh, Kind of over by the, the the little crease in your at the top of your palm. Yeah. Yes, okay. Absolutely. Got it. Yeah, I see where that is. Okay. And so, what's that got? It's got it's it's doing the the bar and the church. Just bar, just church. Opposite sides of the streets. Yeah. Just opposite side of the street. Yeah. There's kind of like a three way stop with stop signs there. Where, where do they hold funerals? At the bar or the church? That's a great question. I'm not from there, but. Depends on who dies. Depends on the bomb. <laughs> right, yeah. Depends on who dies. I think we kind of got uh, got through the weeds with you on this, Patrick. I think we've got Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. No, Charlie. Yeah. I got, I got a second question. Guys, yeah. If you boys got the time. Sure. So I like to pride myself as a Midwest nice person. Um, but I'm in uh, graduate school right now. Okay. I'm actually studying to get my doctorate of physical therapy. Oh, good for you. How do I, thank you. I appreciate it. How do I, people always ask me what I'm doing and I hate telling people that I'm studying to get my doctorate because they start thinking I'm a lot smarter than I really am. I'm just, you know, I'm just pretty standard guy who I just keep going to school. How, how do I approach that? Oh, I see. So you, he doesn't want to be braggadocious. Yeah, he's downplaying how smart right. he is, uh-huh. which is always a good move. But also the doctorate thing is really, you know, that's a line you got to walk. Because if you tell an actual doctor that you're getting your doctorate and then they say, in, right. it's, yeah, and then you fine like, line. Yep. You can't be saying I'm a doctor. In Although there is therapy. nothing better than getting someone who thinks that they're super brainy and smart, like all doctors in the world, riled up because you start devaluing their degree by calling yourself a doctor. That, I do kind of like that. That you is know? fun to watch. You know, you got the snobby uh, pediatrician who thinks that he's smarter than everyone. And you could roll up and say, I am doctor so-and-so, and it'll just get his blood boiling. Yeah, I'm Dr. Patrick. So I think you maybe st- you steer into the skid a little bit and actually start playing it up even more. Yeah, the only time you can't play it up is if, like, you're on a plane and they're like, is it, there a doctor on board? And you're like, <laughs> I'm a doctor, ma'am. I, I, doctor I, of physical therapy. Does this man need that's, his that's not, that's, Charlie Horse looked at? That's too much. You're saying steer into the skid is yeah, it's actually going to help me out. Well, own it more. So when people ask you, don't say I'm studying to get my doctorate. Say I'm going to be a doctor. And then when they then when they say, oh, that's like where are you going to medical school? It's like oh, doctor of physical therapy. Yeah. So like when I uh, was got, I'm well, I, I am. I'm a scientist because I got my exercise science degree. You got to really lean into it. Patrick, did you know Miles is a scientist? Uh, Miles, I too am an exercise scientist, just so you know. Let's go, oh. dude. I could tell. So, I knew you, I liked you. you I, Miles, if, if you could apply to physical therapy school and be on the path to being a doctor. I could be That's a doctor as well. But instead, I'm here at this bar on a Monday, <laughs> at Monday at noon yeah, know, drinking. I, so, yeah, I got to go to class in an hour. So I think you got me beat there. Well, you don't have to. You can just come over and have a drink with us, you know. Where was that? We'll make sure you're never going to become a doctor. Stick with us. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the move, though. I All think right. I, I think you just start telling people you're going to be a doctor instead of trying to be shy about it. Because then they'll think it's funny when you reveal that you're actually going to be just get your doctorate in physical therapy. They'll love that. I, I think that's going to be my, my move from here on out. I yeah. love it. Yeah. On the first date, all you need to tell them is you're studying to become a doctor. You wait till the third or fourth to let them know it's in physical therapy. Yep. Right, right, right. Of course. Yeah. Yep. Get pregnant before you reveal you're not actually a doctor. Oof. Oof. Well, I, that's Miles's advice, not my advice. I just <laughs> like to put a marker on that. Well, Patrick, thanks so much for calling in, buddy. 
Yes. Thank, thank you, boys. I really appreciate the show. Yeah, we appreciate you. Take care now. Hey, have a good one. You See too. Ya. Bye-bye. Charlie, it, I noticed that your first instinct was to just immediately tell him to skip class. Wow. Are you speaking from massive experience? Or? You know, Miles, there's a reason I'm sitting here at this bar. I, uh, <laughs> I graduated um, actually with two degrees. Oh, journalism and environmental geography. I don't I couldn't even begin to think what that even means. Neither can I. And I graduated <laughs> with it. So here we are. You know, folks, isn't geography by nature already environmental? Uh, you might think that. But I studied the interaction of humans and their geographical location. For instance, sounds like anthropology to me. Though There's some of that in okay. there. There's some of that. Okay. But uh, no, I think, you know, we gave him some decent advice. He's going to piss a lot of people off if he takes your advice. And I love that. You're I, just a real uh, crapster. Miles. Some people just like to watch the world burn. <laughs> that is the dynamic between us. Yeah, I'm Batman. <laughs> Get her pregnant Get before her. she learns you're not a doctor. Miles, what would your mother think? You know, she'd laughed at that one, I think. And then went, no, 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 no. You are kind of like the, the Joker. That's kind of your vibe. Yeah. Chaos. Just, I don't care about anything else. Yeah. You got a hair on your microphone. Borrowed it from your beard. <laughs> Look at that. Yep. Pluck. No. Now it's All right. Gone. Let's take another one. Hello. Who do we got on the line? Hey, Miles. You got Charlie. How's it going? Oh, boy. Charlie. What a name. I love it. How you doing, Charlie? Doing well. Doing well, Charlie. You know, it's uh, I got my copy of the Midwest Survival Guide in front of me that my wife got me for Father's Day. Oh, uh, so, heck yeah, you did. You, know, you mostly use been, it as a coaster? Or doing what? Well. Stop it, Miles. Stop it. <laughs> You don't it's need actually, to laugh uh, at under that. Under my laptop to keep it keep it higher. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it is a thick. It's book. a thick one. It's thick, way thicker than needed to be. So, <laughs> Charlie. Well, hey, I, what's cooking, ma'am? What's on your yeah, mind? Sure. Well, what's cooking? Quite literally, we have a bun in the oven, and uh, my wife is about nine months pregnant, and uh, we have been prepping. We have the nursery ready to go. We got a new SUV. We have all the important stuff except for, you know, the name. So we're having a baby girl, and we were just curious if you had any advice for a, a nice Midwestern baby girl name. Okay, well, oh, first of all, go. congratulations. Yeah. Um, I guess I didn't realize it was on, on the list of things to get ready for a baby was to buy a new SUV. So that's kind of cool to slip that in there. Of I like, know. He hey, oh, honey, this SUV is not going to do. We got to get a brand new one. No, not a minivan. Not a no, minivan. We got SUV. A... I like that. That was smart. Yeah, good for hey, you. That was that was a big topic of discussion. But hey, it wasn't SUV to SUV. This was, uh, you know, old Toyota Camry to let's get enough space. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> smart. Yep. You got to do it. You got to do it. All right. So let's dive in. How do you name your Midwest baby? Charlie, what do you think? Well, I would say you start off with the Bible names. Okay, that's kind of a standard practice. If, it, if it's in the Bible, you can name your kid it. You know, that's Ruth, what they said for a while. Ruth. Uh, Ruth. Sarah. Oh, no. Mary. Oh, um, uh, Mary. Yep. Yep. Meg, Mary Magdalene. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mary again. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I, I've got. We're really exposing Charlie's Bible knowledge right now. I, know. I rattled off three in a row and all he could do was name the same one that I did. Bethesda. Isn't that one? <laughs> isn't that a name? Yeah. I think um, Elizabeth is one. Elizabeth. Yep. Yep. Uh, let's see here. There's um, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Come on. Well, you know what? The Bible is sexist. There's not a lot of oh, women that's coming to mind. Just pulls the get out of jail free card yeah. out of his pocket. The Bible's sexist. Nice ah, try. I'm trying to think now. Ah, why? I See? even brought the Bible thing up. Sorry, Charlie. I'm really screwing the pooch here. You know, um, <laughs> let me ask you this. What names have you thrown out there? Well, see, I'm I'm like you guys. I'm I'm more traditional. 
However, you know, my wife has brought up names such as Rowan, Brindley, and, and Sawyer, which oh, man. I haven't quite seen in the scriptures, so to speak. But uh, <laughs> I think you need a man we're, bun we're really before you to, name him that. Well, so Brindley is actually my niece's Either that name, or moved so that's to a good Nashville. one. I don't, I don't know. Oh, Brindley's a good one there. Yeah, okay. yeah, I got yeah. a niece named. Brindley. Well, we're we're down to three. Okay. We're down to three. We're down to Angela, Addie. Or Delilah. Oh. And my thought was with Delilah, you always have a karaoke song you can embarrass her with. That is That's true. true. And uh, you can right call up, her Lila. Yeah, right so. up right up there with uh, Caroline. That one's also a good karaoke name. As well as oh, bah, bah, uh, bah. Maria is also a good one. Yeah. Alice is also a good one. And if you don't know what song that is, I'm upset with you. I who the fuck is Alice? <laughs> um, Charlie. Um, I like Addie, those names. Addie Alice? is my sister's name. Now, is that short for Adelaide or is that just A D D I E? So that's where we're we're allowing some compromise because you know she would want you know I think Adley is the name she would want. I would want more like Addison or something like that. But at least we can agree on the nickname Addie. Oh sure. Um, oh. So that was kind of the thought with it. So some, some derivative of that. Um, well, okay. And, so if uh, you guys are, let's say we're, let's just take that name, right? You want Addison. She wants Adley. I want you to start thinking about playing the long game here. All right. What is going to give you the most leverage in the future? Because that's what marriage is all about is keeping score and having leverage over the other one. And you really got to be start thinking about that. If you're still going to get Addie, which you like, Maybe uh, give in on the the full name so that you can have some more leverage later in the marriage. Not a bad call. I like that. I like that. See, I'm I'm willing to go with Adley because to me she'll always be Addie. So I, I like the thought of building some brownie points, Miles. Yeah. You're, you sound like a, an old hat on this marriage game. Well, I, I didn't realize you'd been married that long. Yeah, it's been four months. We're still married, so I'm doing something right. Yeah. Right, right, Charlie? I mean, and she came with you to Milwaukee, so yeah. oh, she must yeah. like you a little bit. So, okay. The question is, is are you guys maybe thinking about having, I know it's a little early to be thinking about another kid, but are you wanting to have maybe more than one? Yeah, we, we want three. Okay. You got to save all of your names. And we have, we have our boy's name. We have our boy's name figured out. Charlie, you'll appreciate this because we met at Jackson Brady. So our, our boy's name was going to be Brady for Brady Street. Um, oh, wow. So, I remember yeah, when, that. When we got the sex, when we got the sex, we we had everything but the name. We just That's a weird a way of one, saying yeah. that you're having a baby, you know? Yeah. When we See, got the sex. When we were doing the sex to have a baby, <laughs> we had everything planned, what SUV we were going to get and everything. We talked about it. <laughs> You know, if you really do want the name to be the one that you choose, you can uh, have your wife name the new car. <laughs> Is that an even trade? She names the car. You name the baby. That's a good point. See, when I name my cars, I like alliteration and we got a Volkswagen. So that, that could be another good question. What would you guys recommend for our, our Volkswagen? Maybe name? Victoria, the Volkswagen. Victoria. Vicky. Vicky. I like Vicky. It's um, nice. Vicky's gonna be, yeah, you know. Well, I was well, where I was going with that. Asking about the other kid was, yeah. you definitely want to keep all your leverage you can get when you get that. If you end up having a boy, because you want to have a lot of say in the the firstborn son, you know. So, but if they sound like they already agreed on that. So now you just got to use that leverage if you give her the name of so you can get out golfing more. Yeah. Yeah, I say you. You are, by the way, where are you in? Who's up? Who's down? And if you guys are keeping score, who 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 owes the other person more? <laughs> Depends on who you're asking. I'm pretty sure. Well, right but now she's I'll, probably I'll like the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, she's nine months pregnant. She's like, hey, there's nothing you can do <laughs> to to <laughs> compete with that. You know, especially how hot it is this summer. Jeez Louise. Um. Yeah, I guess well, you're. Up. Why are you laughing at me, Miles? It's just a funny thought. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Sometimes Miles laughs when he has a funny thought and chooses not to say it. Yeah. yeah. That's for the best of the podcast. It right really there. is. Well, um, so is that what you guys are going to do? 
Adel Adeline? What is it? What was it? What was it again? Adley, Adley, I think, and, Adley. and Addy, I think that's that's the solution. So it, I'm, I'll look forward to coming home and telling her that tonight. Oh, nice! Wow. Yeah, you get to deliver the news. Wait, Charlie. tell me, you actually are going to take her advice? This is yeah. Charlie. Let's go, hey, dude. I, I do like this, Charlie. I do have to warn you, though. Okay, I mean, do you have this pressure of thinking of naming your child? Because like that name, think about all the people who like name their kids like. Um, uh, Luis or well, Luis is not a good name. Uh, good name for this example, like um, Bar. Uh, no, also not Braxton a good example. with three X's and four Y's. Yeah, the Braxtons of the world with the multiple X's. Like, how is that name gonna age over time? You know, like do, do names become passe at all? You know, you got you got to kind of that's a lot. You know what? That's too much pressure. I'm sorry I even brought this up. That's too much pressure. I think we left you in a good place, and then I just screwed the pooch on that. I'm sorry, Charlie. He hung up. <laughs> no worries. And that's Lots great. To think about. Lots yeah. to think about. Lots to think about. <laughs> I, th- I think we're off to a good good place. You what can- were the other two names you were thinking oh, about Miles again? Miles is going back to the drawing board now. Well, so it was um, we had Delilah, which is what I oh, like, yeah. and then Angela, which was her mom's name, um, which we could always use as a middle name if we go with one of the other two. Now, my question to you, and I feel like other people do this. Do you associate a name with someone you already know like that? So, like, when you say Angela, I just think of The Office. And I just think, uh, you know, (laughs) this this kid's destined to just be super uptight their whole life, you know? Going to have a great personality. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. So my, my wife's the first grade teacher. And, um, so yes, we both have associations with names. She just has way more association yeah, yep. in a negative connotation. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I believe that. That's why it's down. Yeah. You can't All just, of my teachers refuse to name their kids miles after I, I believe I that the system, you know, I believe that. <laughs> Charlie, I yeah, just want to... Wanted... Miles concentration reduced a lot in North Dakota. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Charlie, you could also name her Charlie. C-H-A-R-L-E-Y. Or L-E-I-G-H. So that was my thought. It's a good thought. So that was my thought. Charlie with a, with a Y. And then my wife's name is Jordan, so we can name our first boy Jordan. Then we'd have Jordan, Jordan, Charlie, and Charlie. That's not going to get confusing at all. I don't think so. No, no. Well, that, 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 I mean, that, I do like that. I've never heard of any family doing that. That might be a sign, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that one quickly got nixed. So it got okay. nixed. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, it was a good thought. I like your thought there, Charlie. I like well, where your head's at. But you know what? Maybe your wife knows best. At the end of the day, she is carrying the child yeah. and she's, you know, yeah, let's be honest. She's going to have the final say. Yeah. Leverage aside. Happy wife, happy life, especially when she's nine months pregnant. Uh, my thoughts and prayers grow out to you um, on this naming process, and I think that uh, I think that Adley's a good way to good good spot to land on. I yep. like that. Feel good, Charlie. Feel good. Well, well, thanks for the advice today. We're looking forward to being folks, and why don't you guys say hi to your folks for us? Right. Okay, <laughs> yeah. you betcha. We will. Say hi to Adley's folks for me. All right. Thanks, boys. Real good. Bye-bye. The pressure. The pressure of naming a child, I imagine, is unbelievable. I know. That is... uh, Because I'm I'm thinking, too, like, how is the name going to age? Are they going to get made fun of for the name? Well, there's another element, too. Are they going to like their name? That you can't really express to your friends as much, especially when they're having kids as well, what names you like and don't like. Because yeah. what if that was one that they really liked? And you're like, oh, I hate the name. I hate the name Charlie. And then it'd be like, oh, well, that was actually my number one. So this is awkward. So yeah, you kind of got to play your cards close to your vest of yeah. ones you don't like. Do you like the name Charlie? I do. I do, Charlie. Are you guys saying of having kids? Yeah. Thinking of having a boy? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I am. I'm doing my best. You could name. How do you? How do you? Been do, taking ice baths. I heard that works. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> should we take another call? Yeah, we should take another call. <laughs> Miles, when I get to the cabin, 
What's the first thing you do, Charlie? I put ice in a cup and pour some tippy cow over that ice. I will cheers to that. Heck yeah. Nothing better than looking at a nice, smooth lake in the morning than adding a little tippy cow to my cup. You know what I like to do? What do you like? I got myself a new Margaritaville machine. Of course you do. <laughs> you don't need to always be putting uh, margaritas. It's a frozen concoction machine. So all I do is pour some tippy cow in the old blender, shave some ice in there, and next thing you know, you got a delicious, creamy, shake-style uh, tippy cow treat. I didn't realize you could do that. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe I'll have to get an invite to the cabin, hint, hint, and yeah. uh, try that out. That get, would... the, get on the bike, head over to Minnesota. We'll we'll get you right on the tippy cow frozen concoction. Oh, that'd be slicker than snot on Northern Pike, Miles. Consider me there. All right. So, guys, I highly recommend it, whether you're going over ice just like Charlie or you're shaving ice, having yourselves a smoothie of some sort with tippy cow. You got to do it once you get to Lakes area. There's nothing better. Cools you off. Cools you off. Make it a cow. Make it it a... Tip it on back, baby, with Tippy Cow. Tippy Cow. Welcome to the Belly Up Podcast. Who we chit-chatting with today? Hi, my name's Megan. Hey, Megan. How are you? I am awesome. How are you guys? Good. Where are you calling in from? I'm calling in from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Okay. Lancaster. PA. Is that, it, does that look like Lancaster? Yes, it does. If you're from out of town, most people do say it Lancaster. Okay, but it's Lancaster. Yes. You gotta get that Lank in. The old Lancaster. The old you know? Lancaster. <laughs> Going ass over Lancaster. Yeah. Miles, do you ever, does that, someone ever tell you their name and then you forget it immediately because you're trying Megan. to pronounce Lancaster? Yeah. Okay, Megan. Sorry, Megan. Cheese, Louise. This mind. <laughs> Megan from Lancaster. Why don't you belly up to the bar with us? Tell us what's on your mind. Awesome. Will do. Um, so it's actually like a weird thing today. Um, I'm calling in because I have this problem. Yes. Basically, one of my best friends is a guy. Um, and we hang out all the time. And he's like one of my favorite people in the entire world. Okay. But the thing is, he's, he's also my cousin. So we have been friends for years. We went through a stage where people were like, they're dating. And then we told everyone like, no, we're cousins. We're not dating. Uh (laughs) But we literally go everywhere together and hang out all the time. And now people are saying, oh, they're related. But are you dating? (laughs) So the question is, how do I keep my best guy friend, but also get out of this like, crazy situation okay 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 well yeah uh, you want to jump un- in first a <laughs> lot to unpack there is a lot to unpack um does he think you're dating <laughs> no you paused way that too was, long Megan. that was not the, that and that was not the delay on the phone either no I think she paused no megan does he t- does he does he for sure not think you're date does he for sure not think you're dating he 100% does not think we're okay, dating. Okay, he says okay. if we see each other at family reunions, that's too close. And he also says something about he doesn't want to have children with webbed feet. He doesn't. Okay. Would you got What was the last thing he, he said? He doesn't want to have children with webbed feet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is, I mean, really up there with why you don't want to date your cousin. I just, I'll put that out there. Megan, um, how long have you been seeing your cousin for? probably for the last like maybe eight years so so you can see our problem with this megan okay so hold on he's been your cousin your whole life yeah that's that's right and now you're just friends in the last eight years what what happened before that well we like didn't know each other he's like my second cousin like like second or third cousin oh so now we went from being first cousin to second or third which means legally went first cousins to kissing cousins yeah i'm seeing these i'm seeing these webs dissipate now as the bloodline gets farther and farther away (laughs) so what you got one web toe that's not that big of a deal helps you swim better (laughs) yeah just ask any frog yeah you know, frogs, frogs, cousins, you know, fornicate all the time. That's why they're such great swimmers. Yeah. It's not a it's such a bad thing. Yeah. So, Megan. 
Oh, go ahead, Miles. Well, I was going to say, what? What do you? Why do you think everyone else thinks that you guys are dating now? Not just like spending time together. Do like once in a while, you guys like when you are departing from each other, you hold on to a hug for just a second too long. Is there things like that no. that are happening, or I, what? <laughs> I I like never. We never hug. We don't hold hands. We don't like. <laughs> he is like my best guy friend. So at the very least, like. He is really funny, so I laugh at everything he says. Okay. When he talks, like I'm paying attention to what he says. But aside from that, like I literally don't do anything. Megan, when he talks to you, do you look him in the eyes? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Oh, oh man. No. Oh, what color are they? They're like a greenish blue. Oh, okay. Charlie, what them. color are my eyes? Oh, well, they're beautiful brown. <laughs> Okay, actually, that didn't help our cause. Right? <laughs> um, no, well, Miles, you're different. Um, <laughs> Megan, let me ask you this. What's the name of your um, um, BF slash cause? His name is Dan. Dan. So let's say in this world, let's say there's a world where you and Dan aren't um, fourth, fifth cousins <laughs> once removed. Would you consider dating him? <laughs> This podcast, right? She didn't, she say, didn't no. say no. She oh did not my say God. no. Wow. Okay. So well. the answer is if he wasn't your cousin, would you consider dating him? Here's here's an answer. That's for not you. a no, if I met, Megan. That's, hey, Megan, I want you to tell guy that was, Megan, here's what I want you. This is how the, that should have gone. Charlie, ask it again. I'll be you. I'll be okay. Megan. You be Charlie. Megan, if Dan wasn't your cousin, would you date him? No. Okay, see? That's how that <laughs> should have gone, Megan. But now let's hear your explanation. I'm very curious. This is my explanation. So people always say that you should marry your best friend, all right? So if I found the guy that was just like Dan... But not Dan. I would marry him in a heartbeat. Oh, wow. You guys are going to have some web foot children. <laughs> I'm telling you this right now. Do you guys have one of those things going where it's like if you guys are both still single at 45, you're just going to get married and have web feet kids or what? Is that a deal you guys have? No. <laughs> Is Dan attractive? Absolutely not. Dan no. Attract <laughs> no. Oh, see, oh wait. She Did you see how she went yeah. up with that? No. So he's not attractive. He okay. listens to his so, podcast yeah, Dan, and you're telling him he's... I hate to break it to you, but Megan thinks you're ugly. <laughs> is that your final answer, he's... Megan? He, okay. He is... I like can't say he's attractive. He's my cousin. Yeah, I know. Okay. Scale He'll one this. to ten. Just describe him and we'll determine if he's good looking. Yeah. Go ahead. Describe your uh, best friend, Dan. Okay. He has brown hair, <laughs> uh, bluish green eyes. He has a beard. Okay. What else? Uh, he's fairly athletic. Okay. Cool. Athletic built. Okay. What else? <laughs> That's about it. How how are his calves? I I couldn't tell you. Okay. Yeah. Have you seen I'm him sure. with his shirt off? No. That's Never. A lie. Never. You never no. met the lake with Dan. No, actually not. Okay, well, that's good. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think All that right. was the appropriate way to describe your cousin. Yeah, yeah. that's very cousin. Okay. You You're know. bringing it back here, man. Yeah, Megan. You're starting to learn a little bit. See, actually, <laughs> what we're doing here, Charlie, is we're training her how to answer questions to not let people on that, you know. That's really it, Megan. Like, neither Miles nor I actually think you're fornicating with your cousin Dan. But what we want to do is make it so other people don't think that. So we're trying to weed out the bad habits yes, with you right now. Exactly. So this do is it perfect. Yeah. Okay. So here's the training. Charlie, ask the question about Dan again and okay. see. Does he have a nice package? <laughs> Megan, come on. I, Megan. That was like I do 20 not know seconds. The answer to that question. I did not think you were going to say that. <laughs> Well, I, I meant like... Now I'm kind of curious if he does. Yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes you can tell like if there's certain kinds of pants or something. <laughs> the pleats. The how the pleats pleated play. Pleated yeah. pants. How do the... Yeah. Uh, what size are his hands? 
I don't know. Okay, okay Megan, we're gonna we're gonna sorry, that was a joke. We're gonna bring this back to serious territory. So you have big socks. <laughs> Megan, um, no. how old are you guys? I am twenty three, almost twenty four, and he's twenty five. An older man. Okay, wow. wow. Um okay, and is he has he been romantical with anybody else in his life in the past eight yeah. years? Does he have a girlfriend? Yeah. How'd that make you feel? Not right now. It was fine because we're all like we are always like we've been friends. Yeah. Now here's a question. This is a genuine question because I feel like this happens sometimes. Does uh, his past girlfriend seem to have any concern with how close you and Dan are? Well, we weren't as close when they were dating. <laughs> Did you break up that relationship? Yeah, that was not very much info, Megan. <laughs> Definitely not. Okay. All right. What ended the relationship? Just parted ways or? Yeah, yeah. They just kind of parted ways. Okay. And then you got closer after that. Yeah, because I think it's a combination of like us both like being older and like most of the people in Pennsylvania in Lancaster get married by the time they're like 20 or 21. Oh, one so of like, those kinds we're of kind, That's why we like, that's why we hang out and we like go, like we literally like we'll go to like different events together because we're the only single people left. Okay. Here, I got a good solution for you. You can maybe, this is part of your training. So his name is no longer Dan. His name is now my, my cousin, not boyfriend, Dan. So every time you address him, <laughs> Just go, oh, look who's here. <laughs> My cousin, not boyfriend, Dan, is over there. And then if you do that enough times, I mean, people have to think that you're not your boyfriend. You keep telling them they're not. It sounds a little guilty to me, Miles. <laughs> sounds a, I don't know if that's the best advice. Or just call him Cousin Dan. Cousin Dan. Yeah, that's cousin. the other thing, Megan. That's what's tripping me up a little on this. And I'm sorry about the package line. I want to back it up and just apologize for that. Now put her in uh, forward and go. Um, you're talking about, Dan. you say we've been friends for eight years. You know, we've been friends. Like, you guys have been cousins, and you're still cousins, and you're always cousins. If you said my cousin Dan all the time instead of, like, my friend, yeah. you know what I he, it's, it's the BF talk. The yeah. best friend talk is what's getting well, you in trouble. We, hey. Here's the thing is like, we've been cousins like forever, <laughs> but like, honestly, he has siblings that I don't even know. He's they're that like far, like far removed cousins. If that makes sense. Okay. So I do like think of him more as a friend because I genuinely don't even know all his siblings names. Got it. Okay. But I think you're going to have to put your politician hat on and just start calling him Cousin Dan. That's what it sounds yeah. like. <laughs> just to play devil's advocate, Megan, can you describe to me the family tree of how Dan relates to you? Oh, can you walk us through that? So your parents and just walk me through Dan, okay? Yeah. So let's see. His grandpa would be my like great, great uncle. Oh, oh, okay, shit, this really... is going to be complicated. Let's start. <laughs> let's start with who is related on your mom or dad's side. My mom's side. Okay, and this is your mom's cousin's kid. No. Yeah. Yes, I think so. But like, wait, the, his... no, it'd be like her. I forget. It's like off a generation or something. I don't know. I think you guys might be far enough apart. Yeah. You can go ahead and go just, after it. Uh, are you seeing just anyone? Get, yeah, just get after it. <laughs> Megan, are you seeing anyone right now? No. I know. No. And part of me thinks if I just actually started dating someone, people would at least stop talking about me and Dan. Well, do you think how do you think Dan would That's feel? a that's a hell of a Tinder profile. Looking for someone to date so <laughs> everyone thinks I'm not dating my cousin Dan. <laughs> Megan, how do you think Dan would feel if you started dating someone else? He would be like, I think he would be like so hurt by it, probably. <laughs> you have to go find other friends. Oh my god! Wow. I, I honestly, Megan, I, 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 I've never met. I haven't met you, but I've never talked to someone two people so in love. You two just need to get rid of the cousin talk. You're so far away. Just. Yeah. You know, 
I mean, th- this is. I mean, I wait, I can cut the sexual tension with a n- butter knife on I, this phone call between I, you and Dan. I can, I can just feel it, Megan. Dang. This is not the solution I was looking for. <laughs> this, <laughs> no. Well, you know Megan, what? The truth I, I th- hurts sometimes. Yeah, and honestly, Megan, I think you are looking for the solution. I just think you need two fellas sitting at a bar to tell you that it's going to be okay. And I think it is going to be okay <laughs> if, if you date your cousin. And honestly, Miles we'll stop, said... We got to stop calling Yeah, we got to stop saying cousin. Say uh, fourth cousin twice removed. And that's just a friend. <laughs> so call him friend. Don't call him cousin. And soon that friend might be lover yeah and then soon it might be husband father of your child no. okay okay well i i mean we were giving you the green light of i think that these far your great 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 grandpa's great great grandkid uncle something like that i mean i think your great 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 uncle would be proud <laughs> to know that <laughs> the, watched, the, the, the smile watched- in his cheese curds from x and i years ago you ever watched to game of thrones before yeah it's totally cool <laughs> it's called keeping the bloodline pure yeah and you guys have diluted it enough okay <laughs> so start start bringing that purity back you know uh, no this, this could never happen okay <laughs> no, but, but we're, megan we're joking we're i'm joking. not oh, miles God. i'm dead serious megan <laughs> would it be the worst thing in the world if you guys were together, probably. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think you have right. your answer. Um, that's the other thing about living in Lancaster is that like everybody's related to everybody. It's a big world, much. Megan. It's a and big every, old world. Everybody knows everybody's business. So maybe I should just move. Yeah. There's yeah. A, there's you a and lot Dan of- run away together. <laughs> Where do you guys want to go? Hey, Hawaii? Yeah, start fresh in Florida. No one will know that you're cousins. <laughs> <laughs> and there's so many cousins married in Florida. I mean, that's the capital of cousins marrying cousins. <laughs> that or Alabama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did we help you out today, Megan? Oh, um, not really at all, but... Are you, no, are, are you mad I, at I us? Are you mad at us? No. No? No. And the best part is, is Dan's the one that told me to start listening to this podcast. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh, that sounds like Dan. If I know Dan, like I think I do. He uh, would be, I hey, think. Cl- I- hey, that's classic Dan. Have Dan give us a shout. Hey, Megan, quick question about Dan. Scale of one to ten, like if an average gal saw him on the street, what would they give him? Scale <laughs> one to ten. <laughs> He's going to listen to this podcast. I know. And we know. You we rate just, we, it's simple question. One to ten. Oh, I don't know. I feel like I shouldn't answer that question. You know the answer. She's starting to learn, though. Uh, Miles, stop. I'm uh, I'm the lawyer here. Just one or zero. (laughs) Dude, do not answer that. Do not answer that. For the first time on this podcast Here's the thing. Go ahead. Maybe maybe I could just find Dan a girlfriend. Then I could deal with the pain of losing a friend. And then it would be okay. That's the bravest thing I think you've said on this phone call, Megan. See, look how much you've grown on this call already. It's all because of you guys. You know what? That yeah, means a lot. That really does. Really puts into perspective for Charlie and I of why we do this podcast, bringing cousins together, but also pushing them apart. That's Megan, what it's all about <laughs> when you and Dan inevitably get married, can I be the guy who marries you? <laughs> can I officiate? If in any universe that would happen, a hundred percent. Okay. She said, yes. She said yes. <laughs> no, I think to end the call on a real note here, I think you just got to start calling him Cousin Dan all the time. If you just call him Cousin Dan, yeah. hey, get Cousin Dan a beer. He's over here. Uh, hey, I'm going over to Cousin Dan's house. If you just keep that going, I think you'll start to lose a little bit of that stigma. Stop. I want to suggest one more thing before we let you go, Megan. There okay. are there. Okay. There are these things like 23 and me. Okay. Both of you get your DNA tested. Make sure that you're actually cousins. Cause if you're not, you could have the man of your dreams right in front that of you. It's actually great. And that <laughs> and 23 and me is not even a sponsor of this podcast. We're just telling you to do that. Yeah. And I, I mean, think about that. What if you guys, okay, Megan, do, let's just role play with me here for a second. Let's say you both do the 23 and me. 
And as it turns out, you're not related at all. Like someone's, um, you know, the mom on the other side. Oh, it's a step kid, you know? Yeah. And not even the mom, like several generations back, like that mom, you know, and the mailman, you know, and so there's no bloodline at all to you in that scenario. Would you get together with Dan in a frisky kind of way? Nope. Okay. Good answer. Megan, See, look how much you learned. passed. Yeah, it took us this long, but you official. I think we're. Yep. Yep. I think you're ready to take on the world with yeah. Dan. Did you? I, did I you, feel like I am too. I feel empowered. Yeah, okay. that's exactly how you should feel. Listening to the Belly It Up podcast, found where all podcasts can be found. Oh, you can sit there. Go ahead. Um, uh, Megan, when you said nope, did you believe that? Yes. Okay. 100%. All right. All right. She's We're ready. Done. She is ready to she end this ready. call. She's- I also would like to throw out there that we, are in no way, shape, or form, we are an anti incest podcast. I just wanted to make everyone know that. <laughs> I feel like I had to. It's it's true. It was getting a little incesty there, yeah. and I want to just come squash that. We are an anti incest podcast. Yes, Charlie. Just had to throw that out yep, there. I agree with that. And and Megan, did I offend you at all in, in my line of questioning? No, not at all. Oh. I think you guys are hilarious. Okay. Oh. All right. Well, if if I did or you're sleeping tonight and, you know, if something bothers you, I do apologize on that. But just roll over and tell Dan it's all going to be okay. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Megan. I had to. You were so much fun. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, this was great. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, you have to tell Cousin Dan to call in and tell him to say that it's Cousin Dan. And we'll, we'll get him know. on the podcast. Yeah. yeah, if he says Cousin Dan, okay. he's coming on hot. Yeah, right? we're going to be uh, filming the next few days. So between now and next couple days, have him call in. Okay, sounds good. we Will do. All right. Watch for deer and cousins. Yep, tell tell your folks I says hi. Okay, tell Dan we says hi. Yep, sounds good. good. Bye. Bye, Megan. Uh, What happened to you? What do you mean? (laughs) Usually I'm the one being an absolute dipshit. What happened? I could smell chum in the water. (laughs) I wanted to get to the truth. uh, My journalist took over. Yeah, I I could tell there was some sexual tension going on there. And I just had to get to the bottom of it. I didn't want to say it, but I had to, you know? Okay. Was that, do you think I was aggressive? Do you think she was mad, upset with me? No, I think that you, I mean, at the start of the call, she was wishy-washy, but by the end, no, 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 no deny, yeah. deny, deny, deny. Right. We got her where we needed her to be. We cleaned it up. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. So, Dan, you, you got, got to keep her. explaining to do. <laughs> 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 we need you to call in, buddy. This is a shout out to cousin Dan. We're gonna need you. So, anyways, Charlie, I think that that was another good episode of the Belly It Up podcast. Thanks so, think? Miles. Yeah, cheers to you and cheers to me. And if you do disagree, well then, something else. I forget that rhymes. I will say, like, how far away they are. They are technically kissing cousins. That's like the term. They right? could do that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm listening to like it started off cousins. It went to like third, fourth cousins. That bloodline's gonna be fine. Yeah, I diluted enough. Yeah, We're good to go. All right, well, guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Belly Up Podcast. Wait, before we go, pull tab, pull tab, pull tab, pull tab. Hang on, I got nothing. Nothing, guys. Right. It's been real. Uh, uh, follow us on. Do we say that here? Yeah, follow us on. Oh, stuff. I'm on tour. Can I start plugging my tour on Go this? Go ahead, Charlie. Guys, I'm on tour. Check it out, CharlieBarons.com. Come see me on tour. Miles is coming to a few shows. Yeah, He's going to open for the, me. I'm working the merch tent. Yeah. That's all I can. <laughs> I opened for him one time and he fired me. So now I'm working the merch tent. He so did if call you guys me want, out for my divorce. If you guys uh, want some good awkward. hot deals, I got Keeper Moving merch, slinging them at every show. And uh, if you, hey, bring a cousin. We'll give you a cousin discount. (laughs) (laughs) See you guys soon. Love you guys.